Hello again guys, it's Greg Ola Productions here, and welcome back to the GPWS. Well viewers, welcome back to the Big Ben Style 7 series, and today we're going to be talking about movement cleaning. So, back in 2019, it was apparent that after starting to work on these movements, you know, they are dirty when coming across these things. And you know, I needed to develop a cleaning system ASAP if I was going to work on these clocks. So, after years of messing around, <laughs> we have come to use... simple green to clean movements it works fairly well but you got to be careful because this will discolor movements if you're not careful with it if you leave a movement in simple green for a long period of time it will discolor the brass not rust it or anything like that but just discolor it and if you take it, the movement out of simple green in some container of some sort if you take it out to dry it'll probably rust out the movement unless you have some other type of chemical to remove the simple green from the movement, or the parts of the movement, and yeah, get another chemical on it and then, then let it dry. I was using Spray 9 as that secondary chemical. I still use Spray 9 for different applications, but I won't be using it for clock cleaning anymore because mixing chemicals is very dangerous. And you don't want to mix Spray 9 with Simple Green because there's ammonia in one of them. And you don't want to get ammonia gas in your basement. Uh, no, I did not poison myself, viewers. <laughs> there were no incidents. But I realized, hang on a minute. I'm taking movements that are wet with Simple Green and sticking them in Spray 9, which has ammonia in it. That's not good. I shouldn't be mixing Simple Green with ammonia. Yeah, so, okay, we need some sort of solution we're still going to use the simple green. We need some sort of solution to get the simple green off of a movement after it's been washed. Well, here's what I do. I just take a hair dryer and dry it off. <laughs> that's, that's what I do. I use a hair dryer, and I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute here once, once we're all cleaned up. But yeah, using a hair dryer to dry off movements after they've been in simple green is efficient and not dangerous. Because, you know, then the movement is dry and then we can immediately start reassembling it in minutes after cleaning. Whereas before, we had to wait until it was dry, air dry or done air drying. So yeah, viewers, do not mix chemicals and homebrew cleaning solutions can be incredibly dangerous to concoct because you might cook up some kind of toxic gas type stuff and, and uh, get some type of illness or possibly die. Or something like that, you know. It's... So anyway, we're going to use Simple Green just as is. There's, it is mixed with water. And then we're going to dry it off with a hair dryer. And that's our cleaning process right there, plain and simple. We're also going to be using an ultrasonic cleaner to accomplish our goals here. These things work wonders. And if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, that's okay. Just grab your hair dryer, grab a container, fill it with Spray 9, and just grab uh, an old toothbrush, or in my case, I've got an old electric toothbrush here now. So these are handy. Or grab just a manual toothbrush, or you can just grab some brass wire brushes, which are always handy to have around anyway. But even more so in this application here for cleaning the movement here. And as for our hairspring, that is going to go in a tiny little container filled with spray nine here so this this won't be mixed with the simple green this is going to be on its own little thing the hairspring is going to be all by itself in there and that's a much finer you know a hairspring is a much finer application so cleaning that in a little container of spray nine will basically do it a good job i think, I think i've cleaned hairsprings in there before and, it, and they come out great so that's good so, here's our container of Simple Green. We're going to put all our movement parts in there. Uh, simple Green mixed with one part of water as well. I've got it, or, or something like that. It's half Simple Green, half water in there. So, yeah. And then when you're done, you dry it off with a hair dryer. Plain and simple. No pun intended. So, I think first we're going to stick our hairspring in our little Spray 9 container there. You can just grab it by hand if you want, or grab it with tweezers. It's up to you. 
throw it in there, and close her up. And now for our actual gear train here. We're gonna grab our balance wheel, throw that in there, throw this in there. This can go in as well, the bottom plate. Our alarm hammer, that can go in all the gears of the gear train, can go in. And who else can go in there? Our alarm setting mechanism can go in there. Our motion work uh, can go in there. We're also missing a washer for this little motion work assembly here. If you don't know what that is, viewers, that's for driving the hands. But anyway, that's, you know, we're missing a little washer for that, or a dial washer, so we're going to get that. Our balance cup, I'm pretty sure I have one of those washers hanging around somewhere. The tension spring, we're going to wash that. We're going to get our little alarm bridge here. Stick that in there. I think both knobs, or this knob could use probably a disinfecting, because Simple Green is also a disinfectant. The spacer, where's our washers at? There's one. There's two. Get our alarm uh, trip spring in there. And get the taper pin in there, and also get this gear... The gears that went with the tension, uh, or not the tension, the stop works on the big bend movement. I'll stick those in there, and then I think that's it. I don't really think anything else needs to be cleaned. And I wouldn't bother cleaning the parts that, uh, that just, you know, the parts with the grommets on them. I think you can leave those alone and be just fine. And actually, I'm just being really goofy here because I just forgot. Forgot the entire spring barrel assembly. That can go in there. And the actual main spring. We might have to do two batches of this. Or we can just stick it in there somehow. Just stick it underneath. Perfect. Doesn't really matter, viewers. Now it's all in there. Swish it around a little bit. And now, if, at this point, if you're going to... If you're going to do this with toothbrushes and stuff, you start doing that now. But we're going to run the ultrasonic cleaner and have all this stuff in there. Here we are, viewers. Our ultrasonic is all set up now. We've got our container, literally our Rubbermaid container, just floating in water here. And if you don't know what an ultrasonic cleaner is, it's kind of hard to explain. But basically, this thing generates a whole bunch of little bubbles. And they go through straight through the container here. And they're able to very deeply clean whatever is in either the cleaner in here, which normally you put your cleaning solution in here, but I've just got it filled with water. This is kind of a cheat using containers. You're really supposed to just put everything in, but we're not doing that because, you know, you get to use less solution. And also you get to clean the machine less, so that's always a plus. So as I said, all those little bubbles are going to go straight through the container, and this is where cleaning a hairspring is really nice because you don't have to even scrub it or anything like that. All those vibrations that'll come from this machine translate into the water and the vibrations will go through the container and clean the hairspring in the cleaning solution. So there's no brushes involved with this process. With this over here, this machine does a good job, but there's still dirt and debris left on the movement. So we have to go over it after and get all that extra crud out of the pivots, especially that's where it really builds up but this machine does a great job, like a great start, you know? Uh, you can, as I said, this, this uh, having an ultrasonic is optional, but it's, it's beneficial, viewers. I mean, these are great for clock cleaning. And as I said, it's great for the hairspring. If you didn't have an ultrasonic and you're doing the hairspring cleaning like this, I guess just let it soak and just swish it around in there. That's the best advice I've got to you. You can't really take brushes to a hairspring. You're going to just totally demangle it and destroy it. Anyways, viewers... Let's hit the button. There's our temperature. There's our heating unit. We're not going to use any of that. We just use the actual ultrasonic part of this. We don't use the heating unit in this thing because it doesn't work very well with simple green and all that. Believe me, I tried. So with that, viewers, let's hit go. Now we're all done, and of course, viewers, you're working with electricity around raw water here, so you got to be very careful with this stuff. Always make sure you have all the water and all the container set up in there before you plug it in, not, you know, dumping more water into this thing. you got to plug in, you get yourself electrocuted. 
as you can see, I've got a drainage bin here. And I've got this cart here. So this is how my ultrasonic is set up. It works pretty okay. I can take that bin and drain it in the sink there. So that's great. Anyway, let's get our parts out and do more deep cleaning with all my brushes and stuff. So viewers, like I said, there is no more spray and eye involved except for when I clean the actual hairspray itself in its own separate container. And as you can see, our movement has come out somewhat cleaner here. We can just start scrubbing it. I haven't even wet the toothbrush yet. We can just start scrubbing this. And obviously when we're going in with this movement here, uh, or going into this container here, we need to get all those little pieces out because we put a lot of small screws and stuff that we don't want to lose. We threw that in there and it's still in there now. Don't want to lose any of that. As I drop that, don't want to lose any of that. And yeah, so that's where we're going with this. We're, we're not, we're gonna uh, do as thorough as a, or whatever. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna get all our parts out. That's what I'm trying to say. We're gonna be very thorough about it. There we go. Yeah, this needs like a few. Might even grab the electric toothbrush here and just, especially jam it in those pivot holes there. I think this thing does a nice deep cleaning of those. Hey viewers, maybe an old electric toothbrush if your family has one. One that's in working condition anyway. I think that'd be the... Yes, it is battery operated. I don't know. This has to be waterproof in some way. There's no way that, you know, it's a toothbrush. Of course, you're going to get wet and get toothpaste on it. I'm not sure how they... I'm not entirely sure how that works, to be honest with you. But anyway, yeah, viewers, you get the idea. It's a lot of scrubbing. We're going to get into those pivot holes later. And that's basically all this is right now. Rinsing it off. And we're gonna put it out to dry here. Now there you have it viewers, soaking wet. We can turn our hair dryer on. And just dry her off like that. Oh, something went rolling off the, off the table there. I just saw a toothpick leave the area there. Yeah, don't, make sure you don't have any really small kind of parts lying unprotected in the area because they will and i mean in the area as in not on this little whatchamacallit here this this chapman's ice cream lid you know make sure you have all your small parts where they won't roll away on you and i'm running it on low right now i think i might possibly turn up the heat But yeah, this is, I think this is the best way to deal with this. This is our mainspring. There's our washers and stuff there. And this, this process, viewers, has to be done more than once, I think. These parts are, you know, they're looking better, but they need to be cleaned more. Where are all my little washers? Oh, there they are. I think there were two of them. I think I've got everything, basically. Some parts just want to fly around. There's the balance cup there. I'm just going to you know. No, 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 no. You don't get to run away on me like that. So th uh, this is a better method, viewers, really. And yeah, see that right there? There's a massive smear of dirt on that. You know, that's not good. That's not clean. I need to like, clean that again. But the point is, for now, get it dry. And I'm chasing any simple green remnants around the wood here. That looks dry. There we go. That looks, that looks good. Let's get another lid over here. There's a random washer in there. Actually, yeah. Well, I'm gonna stick that there for a minute. I guess you could just do that too. Leave the hair dryer running here. 
I gotta go put this little washer away. careful what you point this thing at because it's going to just go flying. This hair dryer, you know, it's on low. It's not running on full power, but it's still, you know, it's forcing stuff around. I'm moving parts around. I don't want them sitting in little puddles. You get the idea. 